miserable to him and something that he could not handle. But in reality, death was, to, that he came to die. Yes. That's why he came. The only reason he came to earth was to atone for our sins. And so, and the important thing you have to understand is God does not have any ad hoc meetings. All right? All of this was planned before the foundation of the earth. Hallelujah. All right? Everything, even mm. today, was planned before the foundation of the earth. And, and, and we have to understand that there is nothing new or nothing that takes Jesus by surprise. Hallelujah. All of this is he knew. And, and, and that I find amazing, too, because... He and Father and the Holy Spirit are the three, and they make these decisions and they make these plans. And all of a sudden, he comes and he lives out the plan. Now, I don't know how he must have struggled to be born a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but he, all of that was a part of the plan. And, 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 and even... The years he spent learning the carpenter trade under Joseph and, and struggling with all of that, all of that was a part of the plan because he had to know what it was like to struggle in making a living. He had to understand what you all go through in your work every day and, 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 and how, having to put up with people and and, and especially when people get nasty. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I'm sure they got nasty when they came into the carpenter shop. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm sure that there were some people that went in there and told him he didn't do something right. Mm-hmm. I mean, isn't, isn't that what happens with <laughs> when you're in business and with people? Yes. <laughs> and he had to know all of that because the scripture says that he, he, he had to experience all that we experience mm-hmm. so that when he died... It was be he could honestly say there is nothing that we go through that he didn't go through. Yeah. All right. Yes. And, and yes. so when the great judgment throne comes and we stand there in the judgment throne, you're not going to be able to say, "Well, God, you never knew." Yes. You don't understand. <laughs> no, he's touched with the feeling, feelings of our infirmities. Yes. He's he's touched. By the things that we go through, emotionally, spiritually, physically. You know, I often think back to the, when he was 12 and he was telling the priests things they didn't know. And they were, he was answering their questions and asking questions they couldn't answer. And, and then his mother and dad took him home and... Uh, It then says, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. Hmm. All right. Now, I don't think that meant that his mother and dad beat him or something. (laughs) It meant with the struggle of being God and having to stay confined to the flesh. Yes. And to live in the world of the human being instead of in the world of God. Hmm. And, and, And fitting into that. And with all of that, he knew that the one day he would go to the cross. He knew that. And, and, you know, that's why when seated at the table, he says to his disciples, the person that I give this sup bread with, that I dip in juice, he's the one that's going to betray me. And, and he did it. And then none of the eleven understood what he did. Hmm. They thought that, if you read it carefully, it says that they thought he was going out, that Judas was going out to give money to the poor or buy something or whatever. And, and, and Jesus just got through saying. Just said it. But the, the eleven couldn't believe that any one of the twelve had the potential of being a betrayer. Yeah. And so they had a struggle with it. And they couldn't believe it. All right, and and, and, <clears throat> and, and you know, uh, I think I mentioned it last night. But another thing that I find very interesting in this time frame is um, 
I don't know where Peter got a sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Peter was a fisherman. Yeah. If you told me he had a fishing pole or something, but a sword. And why did he have a sword that night in the garden? They went there to pray. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, and when did you carry a weapon to go pray? <laughs> You know, and, and then, like he's going to save Jesus, there are about 600 soldiers or people who come in to arrest him, and he's going to save Jesus by whacking this one guy's ear off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, but as you put the story together, it really at times, it almost seems absurd. And then Jesus picks up the man's ear and put it on his, puts it on his head, and they walk out with his ear on his head, and there's nothing wrong. Hallelujah. But they don't accept the fact that he just worked a miracle. Yeah. Right there in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they saw it. They saw Peter cut it off, and they saw Jesus put it back. But that didn't register somehow. Mm -hmm. And when they're standing, whether it's at the high priest's place or with Pilate, they, they, they never caught on to the fact that Jesus worked a miracle right before their eyes. Amen. But it, it didn't bother him because he knew that it was his the time. purpose he came had to be fulfilled. And it was going to be the cross. And it had to be. Yeah. And no matter what he did leading up to that, it was not going to alter the fact it had to be done. that the cross, that it was there. Now, Esther and I have been to the tomb of, of the, the garden tomb. And there is no proof that Jesus was laid in that tomb, okay? Because first of all, they don't know where Golgotha was. And you come out of the gate towards Damascus, and there is a place where now they have a bus terminal. And you look at the, the rocks, the formation of the mountainside up there, and if you really stretch your imagination, you can see what might be two eyes and a nose, but you really have to stretch your imagination to do that. And then just behind it was what they call the Gordon's Garden Tomb. And that's it's named after Gordon because he's the man who discovered that tomb. And therefore, he said this is, must be the tomb where, where Jesus was laid because it's right behind the, the hill that was supposed to be Golgotha. Except, except they didn't go out the Damascus Gate. And all I'm getting at is, when we get to playing these kinds of games over t names and places, forget it. He came with a purpose to die. Yes. And he Hallelujah. came with a purpose of rising from the dead. Yes, Lord. And he came and fulfilled the purpose for which he came and for the, why he came. So that he could redeem you and me and wash our sins away. Mm. And not one time, but all the time. He continually does it. It's, it's, it's something that's done all the time. And, and, and we have to understand that. That it isn't something you just do once. You start once. But then all through the rest of your life, you're having to say, Jesus, wash me again. Forgive me for this or forgive me for that. Wash me again. Yes. And it's understanding that that continues because of the cross. And, you know, it's, it's just been so, it's so amazing to me. <sighs> that when we, we think of all the wonderful things God has created and all the dynamic and power of his voice, why he would have to choose the death of his son to atone for us is something that blows my mind. Now, for Israel, he said, kill a lamb. It didn't make any difference. They soon got to the point where killing lambs didn't mean anything to them. But his son, that's a different song. Hallelujah. And that's why tonight mm. we can sing songs like we did. That it was because of what he did for us. Yes. 
And so tonight our sins are washed away because oh, of Calvary. Yes, a, a second time was used. A second time. What a great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a great God. Nothing by accident. No, nothing by accident there, but yep. nothing by accident. All of this he planned so carefully before creation. Hallelujah. And get it all together. And you know, sometimes as I read the Old Testament, I, I, I wonder if knowing that God knew all of this, why did he put up with it? Why did he tolerate it? But you see, he tolerates us. Uh, amen, every day. <laughs> and I'm so thankful. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that he puts yes. up with us. Hallelujah. Especially when I'm driving a car. <laughs> 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 and, and my wife is always telling me, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> His love. I don't need to have hear anything. Sometimes it's, it's just I get goosebumps all over me, and I feel His presence in the office, and I know He's there, and I'm experiencing Him. Yes, and yes. It's not because I'm saying something or I listen to some music or anything. He's just there. Yes. And that's what makes all of this so meaningful. Hallelujah. So meaningful to us. What love. What amazing love. What amazing love. You know, I, I was thinking the other day, well, Jesus, why didn't you just die? Why did you let them beat you like this and go through all the horrible pain you experienced? Mm. Experience the rejection of your disciples. They ran and were gone. And the crowd that applauded you and called for you all of a sudden turned their back on you. Yes. And you willingly submitted to this. Why? Why didn't you just spoke them out of this? And, and die. But you know, he did all of that because of all the things we go through in the course of life. Hallelujah. So that we could never say, you, didn't, you don't understand, Jesus, what I went through. He'll be able to say to us, yes, I do, I understand. Mm -hmm. and that's why I love and forgive you, because I do understand. Tonight we're going to take communion, and I want you to do it. First of all, I'm going to have you all come and sit right across the front row here. And Antoine and Heidi, I'm going to ask you to assist me today in okay. serving Kate. Right. But as you take the communion today, I want you to do it with that understanding that Jesus, you've done so much for me. Hallelujah. And yet you continue to do for me. Yes. You, you never stop. You, you never stop doing. And that's what's so amazing. To Hallelujah. Me. He never stops. And I think of the backsliders out there. And, and yet at the same time, he loves them and he passionately is happy with them. Yes. It's amazing to me. What an our Savior and Lord is and has done for us. What an amazing God. Hallelujah. What an amazing, amazing God. 
Thank you, Jesus. And so, if you can move up to the front row. The night just is. That's exactly what I need to say. You can hear you. No matter the bruises, no matter the scars, still the truth is a cross that you made. The cross that you made. you bore in your body, you brought our healing. And I release that for people in this room tonight that need a healing. They're here, they're glad to be here, they need a miracle. And I thank you for it, God. Thank you. Father, I, I pray for those that aren't here tonight, or wanted to be here, but because they're not feeling well, they're not here. And God, we reach out to you because your word is not limited to this room. That's right. Hallelujah. You no hear distance. Us here, but it goes off wherever. And we send it out there on the wings of the wind that it'll go. Hallelujah. And I thank you for it. Jesus. I thank you that you were willing to give your body for our for Thank us. you, Jesus. What an amazing Savior and Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. then, Jesus, you took the cup. And you said to them in the upper room, this is my blood which is shed for you. And I know we're just taking juice this evening, 
But Jesus, I'm so thankful your blood was shed for me. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that you washed my sins away. Yes, Lord Jesus. Jesus. I'm so thankful, Jesus, that there's no end to your love. Hallelujah. There's no boundaries. Thank you, Jesus. What amazing love. What amazing love. And as we take it tonight, Lord, I pray that you will cause something to rise up within us, a joy, yes. a feeling of exhilaration because, Hallelujah. Jesus, all that you do for us, all that you've done for us, and you've given us a hope that one day we're going to sit with you in your Father's kingdom and we're going to drink the cup of final blessing. Wow, what a day that will be. Yes, hallelujah. But until then, we take this cup here now in remembrance of all that you've done for us. Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's been helping us out the last two nights, doing something he'd never done before. Fantastic job, McCullough. And I'm so happy to have Marcella with us tonight. If you haven't met her, and you know what? She is a fellow Jamaican. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 she's been here more. Longer than she's lived in Jamaica. <laughs> a whole lot like you. <laughs> but it's good to see you and nice to have you with us. What a great time. Can you just stand with me, please? You know what? I want you to come real close. I don't want to feel like I'm a platform or something. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> come on, David. Get up here. Come on, David. Now, those of you may not know who David is, but he's the guy who cleans the building and takes care of it for us. Usually when he comes on Friday night, there's nobody here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, a weird satellite that can uh, actually destroy bone marrow. Yeah, the mm. satellites talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Father, I just thank you for these Hallelujah. dear ones. Thank you for family. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that it's amazing 